So uh, I actually wanted to talk about how this started because uh, it's not like Tim had a huge uh, plot to run for the last 10 years like the rest of the po politicals. Um, this was kind of sprung from the TPP. Can you kind of talk to me about locally what you guys did here? Obviously, she uh, has supported fast-tracking TPP. Right. The CWA had, a, had really a set the stone. Uh, if you voted for TPP, we were going to consider primarying you, whether we were a Republican or a Democrat. And Debbie was the only one that actually voted for uh, Fast Track in the whole Florida delegation. So she was a, it was a no-brainer. We had protested CWA, the Citizens Trade Campaign, a lot of different community groups protested her about the TPP. Uh, we handed her hundreds and hundreds of constituent letters to tell her to vote no on Fast Track and the trade agreement from all sources, young people, senior people, everybody. And uh, they accepted it, kind of brushed us off. The second time uh, we went to go visit the office, um, they called the cops on us. They actually called the cops on us in her, at her Pembroke Pines office. Uh, then the third time, they, they just said that they were out dealing with the constituents, knowing that we were coming. Uh, so her constituents come to get her ear. You know, she represents you, and she called the police. Yeah, she called the cops. I mean, I think uh, maybe I made a mistake. It might have been her aventure office that that happened. And we had seniors that were coming there. And when the cops came, they came like that there was actually, you know, there was some terrorists. And they came with their guns out. And it scared the bejesus out of people. She did not have any information in, about uh, on the directory of where her office was. They had no signs out in the streets. But we kind of knew where it was. And we went from floor to floor. And by the time we got to her floor, the cops came out and escorted us out. There was probably five or six cop cars coming and we were told never to come back again. Were you guys doing anything other than protesting? We weren't even protesting. We were handing constituent letters to her about voting no on fast track in the TPP, our, our, you know, our constitutional right, for goodness sakes. And then finally, um, she uh, dismissed us, and uh, we, uh, we met privately, me and her, and she talked about uh, she had never been protested as a, in her years of office. And I told her, well, you voted wrong on the fast track and the TPP. She told me that uh, she uh, was contemplating the TPP and explained her knowledge of the TPP. And quite frankly, I knew more about the TPP than she did. And at the end of the conversation, she said, let me just tell you something. I don't get protested. You better back off. And me, the CTC, the CWA, and other community groups, we did what the right thing was. We protested her twice. We met Tim Canova during one of the protests, who was a constituent, was unhappy because she was unreceptive to meeting with him. He's a scholar. He, he understands trade. He understands public finance. And we talked about, you know, we need to find somebody to run against her. We need a primary here with a good candidate. Unbeknownst to me, he was a constituent. The more we got to know him, and other people said, you know what, Tim, you should run. And he thought about it, and I'm sure he talked to his, his family and friends, and I think I was one of them. And he said, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. Because, you know, the TPP is so uh, destructive to working families. We have an unreceptive member of Congress, and I think I can make a positive change. And the rest is history. When, because, uh, uh, you know, I've been out, uh, you know, you were canvassing, so you're a colorful guy. With Debbie Wasserman Schultz, what vibe did you get when she said, I've never been protested? Because I get the impression that she... Um, you know, it was a little highbrow in, in some areas where uh, she was insulted that, you know, uh, a union person would uh, go against her in protest. I've, I've known her for many, many years, and, and I'll be honest with you, I thought she was a friend. She, she knew where she came from. She knew how important the middle class was to this country. And I think as her years went by, she got corrupted and she forgot where she came from. And she doesn't even know what it is to be middle class or people that are strive to be middle class. And in my opinion, she's become very arrogant and kind of dictatorial, if you will. It's her way or the highway. I think that's the way she, she ran her the DNC. And I think that's the way she's run this office. She doesn't know the pulse of the people here. She has no, no idea. And the, the last thing I would really like to say is this is not just an anti-Debbie Wasserman Schultz vote. This is a candidate that I truly believe I've seen once in a lifetime. Somebody who's intelligent, has the integrity, and a vision that we need in this country so desperately. And uh, with, with Tim, what we noticed today, uh, a lot of people didn't know who he was because it's a low turnout district. Uh, do you think that he's kind of speaking similar tones to what you saw with Bernie, uh, kind of knocking people over the head things that, oh, they were struggling, but they didn't really know why they were struggling or who, whose decisions 
in D.C. are causing them to struggle. Are you seeing some of that where people are finally waking up in this area? Absolutely. I think people don't really realize that these public officials that people love to get their pictures taken with and, you know, clamor to see that they have direct impact on their quality of life. Whether it's your home, it's your car, it's your education, or your health care, or the water you drink, or your job being outsourced, or what have you, and they see somebody like Tim, when they when you get to t tell people and educate him on his background and his vision and his stand on these vital issues, they're turning around. And uh, lastly, because I want to get this going viral, can you confirm or deny that your name is actually fucking Fred Frost? I'm fucking Fred Frost. I was told that from my successor at the AFL, who was at a table at a labor banquet, that the congressman referred to me as that in front of other members of Congress, and I'm proud to hold that label. And you got that label because you... Uh, they're not exactly inviting you for tea and cake, Congress. I like to talk truth to power, have all my life, and will continue to do so as long as I'm a breathing individual. Fucking Fred Frost. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Wonderful.